I just wanted to show you some of the projects I've worked on over the last few years, to be honest. Um, as with everything, uh, you don't have enough time to spend on your hobbies, so um, they tend to get neg neglected. <clears throat> um, I've got a few things I want to show, but I want to start off with uh, what I've got here. I don't know if the camera will see. I'll, I'll bring it up close. Yep. Okay, so this is a gorge. And the concept of a gorge is before fish hooks, this is what people used to catch fish. And you'll see in a lot of um, survival books, they recommend creating them. Uh, this, these, this is made out of whalebone. And I've got a few smaller ones I've just made today out of uh, pork chop bone. So it's they're made out of this. Just cut up and then ground down. So I've got a smaller one here. So you want to show the smaller one, Phil? Yep. Obviously, big fish, big gorges, small fish, small ones. So what I'm trying to do here is, you'll read in uh, survival books where uh, repeatedly, if you look back over the last 20 years worth of survival books or even longer, uh, they will t they just repeat themselves and they will say something like make yourself a gorge or fashion a gorge out of appropriate material bone or wood and a fix they love to use words like a fix to a piece of string and you know and then you're basically what happens you bait them the bait will actually go over the hook or over the gorge and basically the bait will go over like this so the string lays flat. So what actually happens is when the fish comes along, takes the bait and it's supposed to ingest it fully and then you, the fisherman, once uh, the fish is taken off, you jerk it and it actually cro catches in the gullet like this. So what this is meant to do is I've made these smaller ones. I went fishing with my son over the weekend and we caught a few brim and I wanted to make one up there but I actually made one and it broke I made it a little too thin uh, and I want to try that again so I've made these three here of varying sizes slightly different sizes and I will try them uh, I might even take them to Indonesia and try them in Indonesia because I can go to uh, fish farms over there that I can sort of pretty much guarantee I can try catching a fish on uh, fish with there so uh, it reduces the, the chances of uh, and just not actually getting to see if they work. Um, so we'll have a video, hopefully, of me fishing in Indonesia with these. Uh, and we, we either prove or not or deny uh, whether or not that actually is a, a, a concept worth pursuing. One thing about bone, though, is um, in this day and age where everything has to go through security, uh, at least bone doesn't set off metal detectors. <laughs> It might actually, uh, in the case of the whale bone, when I first bought that, I bought this whale bone in a sheet like this from New Zealand, probably about 20 years ago. And it's been in and out of the country quite a few times. But now, um, it's, it's prom I, would, I actually have problems bringing it in. So I, if you declare the whale bone, you'll probably get uh, in trouble because it's a endangered species. Now, the concept behind this, this is a goat's, foot trigger system. Now I made this again out of whalebone and as you see I'm just using the gorge as a as the center shaft and basically what this does is it converts a, a, a bow or bush bow through to a crossbow and what happens is you, you arrow and you have a notch uh, a knock on your arrow and your string is held in position at the rear the bow is in the front and underneath I have another trigger system, simple one, that would just fit under there. Uh, what I'll do when I go back to Indonesia, I'll, uh, I'll make one. It's easier to make it out of bamboo. And what happens is uh, the trigger is pulled forward by the string. And then there's a little lever mechanism here that stops it going forward. And when, But pretty much all you do is you, when you pull the trigger, that releases, comes down, and it releases the pretty much the bolt, which is a word used for a crossbow uh, arrow, it releases that. I've made them before, I don't have any video footage unfortunately, so I will try and make one again in Indonesia when I'm back. Just easier over there because the bamboo is so much more uh, available. 
Now this one I've made it in a split, so what I can do is I can reverse it. If I wanted to, to just use a single string like this and have a classic bolt in front scenario. So it's a, I don't particularly ever use it like that. It's actually better to use the other way with the, where the arrow is actually um, fitted onto the string before release. It's more accurate. So that's something I hope to actually have a, uh, a bit more video footage with. If I don't get it done in Indonesia, I certainly will try and make it here to show you. One thing with the uh, crossbows though, it's they're illegal in Australia. So if I make one in Australia, it will have to be uh, a, a toy one of low poundage uh, rather than an actual serious one. Uh, these are sort of like copied offline off, uh, you know, um, primitive men sort of style uh, fishing uh, spear points, two different styles. The hole in the center is because what you do is you you shaft this on reasonably loosely onto a spear shaft and you have a string go through the hole and uh, basically the when you hit the fish that you want the uh, the shaft floats free and this will remain in the fish with a line in it and you can pull it in. Uh, I've never used it, I've never tried it on. Uh, I don't see why it wouldn't work. Really what I'm doing here is just experimenting with the bone as a medium uh, because you actually have to uh, utilize it slightly differently. Uh, of course it's not as strong as steel can, and when it's thin it gets quite brittle and uh, so you have to sort of play with it a little differently. A bit more rounded points. No, no, no reason why that wouldn't work though. Um, and this is, I do blacksmithing too. Um, just to give a comparison, uh, this is a, a little uh, arrowhead that I made uh, purely from a piece of uh, rod steel, a little spring steel. Um, and I actually have tested this, it, you know, obviously does fly it's a little on the crooked side, but you know, it's all by eye and it certainly would be effective. So, um, and this is more like a primitive survival skills rather than uh, like a next 72 hours sort of uh, urban pre preparedness. But it's certainly, uh, you can learn a lot from how uh, primitive man actually survived and just practicing their techniques. So yeah, I just thought that might uh, be interesting to a few of you guys. Uh, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that you guys might have about, about this. And stay posted uh, for how well these uh, gorges work. Catch you guys later.